what is up you guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new to the channel don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment down below of what you want to see next i've always really liked the way film looked and i wanted to recreate that in post so these are the techniques and methods that i learned and i'm here to share that with you guys so let's jump right into it to start off you're gonna need your clips i already have two clips of mine on my timeline in premiere if you're using After Effects, that's fine, because everything that we're going to do in Premiere, you can do the same in After Effects, that would just work fine. Also, we're going to need some stock footage. To start off, I have a 16mm film gate, then I have a 8mm film gate, some extra grain, a generic 16mm grain, and an adjustment layer. This one you can just make in After Effects or in Premiere. Alright, let's start out with making the 16mm effect first. So the first thing you want to do is to nest or to pre-compose your clip. So simply right click on your clip and press nest or pre-compose. I'm going to call this clip 01 for now. Next thing I want to create are some channel shifts and some channel blurs. So I'm going to use an adjustment layer for that. First thing I want to add is some chromatic aberration. I use a plugin called FT Lens Distortion, but you can use any effect that can create chromatic aberration. I'm going to offset the red and cyan channels a bit, so I use a value of 5. And that's going to create some light offset in the corners of the RGB channels. Next thing I want to do is use a channel blur to blur the red channel a bit. So grab a channel blur, yep, there it is, and drag it on top of your adjustment layer. Also here I want to distort the red channel a bit, so enter a value of 5 just to give it a bit of an offset. Five is maybe a bit too extreme, maybe three will work better, something like this. And now you can see that we offset the channels a bit and it created some hazy effect. It's very soft how it made the image a bit greener, but this is definitely gonna help to sell the effect. So the next thing you want to do is to add the film gate on top. I have this film gate that I found online, the 16 millimeter film gate that I'm gonna use. I'll leave some links down in the description. So drag the gate on top of your adjustment layer and because this one has a white background I'll set the blending mode to multiply. Usually they'll come with an alpha so it should just work fine. For the next part we're going to create the halation. The halation is some sort of red glow around the highlights that you see a lot in 16mm film. So first thing is to duplicate your clip, drag it on top and do the same for your film grain. Duplicate it and drag it on top. Now we want to create a mat. So type in mat into the effects panel, select the track mat key and drop it onto your clip. In the mat input, we're going to use video 5 because our film frame is on layer 5 and we're going to use the mat luma because our film frame has a black and white input. If your film frame has an alpha, you can use the alpha input as well. For now, deselect or hide the other three layers and we're gonna type in luma and add a luma key to our second clip. We want to key out the darker parts so I'm gonna raise this a bit until we only have the highlights. Something like this should work fine. Next I'm gonna get grab lumetri color and add it to the effects panel. When we go to basic correction, I'm going to expose it a bit down, so I think minus 0 0.5 would work for me. And then in the Lumetri color, I'm going to go to curves, to the red channel, and raise it a bunch until you get nice red highlights. Then we're going to add a Gaussian blur. I'm going to go over a value of about 25. And then we can enable the other layers again. As you can see, the highlights are now red, but this is not exactly what we want, so we still need to do the last step. So in blending mode, we're gonna change it from normal to pin light. Now you can see that we created this red halation around the image and around the highlights. This is what we want. So the next and final step that we need to do is to add grain on top of our image. The grain is probably one of the most iconic things that people think of when they think of 16mm film. 
So I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer, quickly copy it and delete the effects that are currently on there. And drop it on top of our layer stack. And for this method I'm gonna use Film Convert, which I think is a really nice plugin to create some nice grain. So when we go into the film settings, first of all, I don't want any of the film color or curve, so I'm going to put that to 0%. And then I'm going to select 16mm film, and I'm going to increase it to 150% because I want it a bit more extreme. So, But if you don't have film convert, there's another way to do this as well. So let's quickly get rid of film convert. And we're going to grab the 16 mm film stock or film grain stock that we had. We're going to drag that on top and you can see here we have the 16 mm grain footage. Now if we change the blending mode from normal to soft light, it will add the grain on top of your image and it will also give you the feeling of 16 mm film. Now that you've done all these steps, your image is ready to be color graded to the movie that you like. But for now, let's move on to the 8 mm film. So for the 8mm effect, I want to go for the overscan effect where you see the upcoming and the previous frame as well and you really get this nice vintage. So let's get into it. So just like we did before, we're going to start with a clip. Then I'm going to grab my 8mm film frame. The difference between this one and the one we used before is that this one has space for three images so what we need to do is duplicate our plates two times one two and stack them on top of each other now we need to offset them so i'm going to grab the top one and move it all the way to the top Just like this so it's nice and neat on the edge and then we're going to grab the second one and move it down a bit more just like that. So now we have our clip duplicated two times and we can see a little bit from it on the top and a little bit from it on the bottom. Now let's grab these three clips and right click nest them again or pre-compose and I am going to call this clip two, enter and there we go. Now we have our clip. Now we want to add the chromatic aberration. So again, add an adjustment layer on top, add the FT lens distortion or whatever plugin you're using for chromatic aberration, add it on top. This time I'm gonna go a bit more extreme, so I'll put it to 13, something like that. You can already see it happening in the corners, maybe even 12. And then I'm gonna grab my channel blur, go to the red channel and set it to 15 to start out with. And we can already start see the image being hazy a bit too much I would say so 12 and now we added chromatic aberration all right because eight millimeters is not that sharp we're gonna add an extra Gaussian blur on top so select your adjustment layer that we just made add a Gaussian blur you can use camera lens blur as well I'm using Gaussian blur because it's a bit faster Drag it under the FT lens distortion and your channel blur. And then give it the blur of maybe 8. And don't forget to repeat the edge pixels. I think something like 8 or 6 will do fine for this clip. 7. Just something to get rid of the digital sharpness. Alright. So now we want to create the halation. So just like before, grab the clip. Paste it. And grab the film frame and paste that one and then drag them on top of each other. For now, quickly disable all the other layers so you can see what we are doing. So, first of all, we're gonna type in mat, select the track mat key, top of the clip. This time, select layer 6, that's where our mat is. And because this one has an alpha, you can see that it already used the alpha to cut away the image, but we need to reverse it because we need to flip the alpha first. As you can see, this is not the result we want, so let's reverse it. And there we go. We have our image minus our film frame. So up next, again, Luma key. Select 
and just tweak it until you only have the highlights that you still want. I'm gonna go for something, something like this. So next, again, metric. Go into the base correction and exposure down to minus zero. Right. And then go into the curves, select the red channel, and drag it up a bunch so we get a nicer red. Then into the effects panel, Gaussian blur, 25 edge pixels. Now we can show our, our other layer skin. So enable those and then set it again the blending mode of the clip to pin light. And there we go. You can see that we created again this sort of red elation around the highlights. And the nice thing that you can see, we can zoom in, is that the halation, when there's highlights, it sort of bleeds over the edge. So you get this interactive halation, you will see it when we play it as well. And that's what we want. Right, so now we can start adding the grain again. So I got this extra heavy grain plate that I'm gonna use as an extra. So paste that on top. It's already set to screen. Let it go to screen, so it blends nicely. And I'm gonna reduce it a bit gonna put it to 75% because I just want this as a base layer but I don't want this to be too present because now I'm gonna add film convert again so grab an adjustment layer quickly clean it of the effects that are on there and drag it on top again type in film convert add it to your adjustment layer go to film settings just like we did before film color to zero curve to zero and then add the grain size to eight millimeters right. so already started pretty good maybe super eight if you prefer that it's all up to you let's go for super eight now but boost it a bit it boost it to 150 and let's see how it looks it has the rough grain it has grain on the sides it looks defocused it has the halation. I would say this one is ready to be graded and set to the mood that you want. So this is it guys. This is how I create my film looks in Premiere Pro and After Effects. As you can see, we created the 60 millimeter look and the eight millimeter look. If I develop a new technique or a faster way to do it with better results, I'll make a part two to this video. For now, this is it. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and comment down below what you want to see next.